Welcome to this video on wind farm planning considerations. On this channel, Synergy Files, we aim to inspire budding engineers for a better, more sustainable world. Wind turbines have been a great addition to the energy mix. Due to exponential growth of wind energy in recent times, wind turbines are normally the first choice when looking at zero emission power sources at our disposal. In countries where areas of low air pressure dominates, Wind turbines are already achieving grid parity, that is they are producing energy at a cost at which it is available from the grid. Their efficiency is steadily improving and costs are coming down. As the turbine designs are getting bigger, more consideration is required for their planning, installation and commissioning. There are eight major factors that need to be addressed during wind farm planning. These factors are as follows. Number one is wind potential. The second thing is proximity to energy highway. The third factor is radar interference. Fourth is site accessibility. Fifth is wind shadow. Sixth is geology, groundworks and excavation required. And seventh is historic or touristic interest on the site. And lastly, the ecological interest in the site. Let's look at each of these factors individually. The first and foremost thing to consider is the wind potential of a proposed site. The windier the location is, the higher the feasibility of installing wind turbine. Normally, an year-long study is carried out using the data obtained from weather station or met mast installed on the site before any area is considered suitable for a wind farm. The information regarding wind speed and direction is then recorded and analyzed. It should be noted that steady high-speed wind is better than gale force wind that rapidly changes direction. Turbulence intensity of wind is another parameter that has to be considered. High amount of turbulence can be caused by obstruction in the wind path. This can result in adverse forces and vibration on the turbine structure and machinery. Turbulence also causes high shear in the blades. The second factor to consider is the proximity to energy highways. If wind turbines are to be located far away from population centers, which they are to feed, then it should be ensured that their location is in close proximity to energy highways or high power transmission lines. If not, then the added cost of transmission of electricity from the wind farm can become prohibitive. Now, there are instances where energy companies have picked up the tab for installing transmission lines to the wind farm. In such cases, this cost is adjusted in the power purchase agreement. Thus, the benefit to the wind farm owner is greatly reduced. If the energy of the turbine is to be consumed locally, then the issue of proximity does not arise. The third factor to consider is radar interference. Wind turbines can interfere with radars. This becomes a significant concern if they are to be situated near airports or in an area that is under defense surveillance. The movement of the turbine blades produces a blink on the radar screen. There have been instances where radar interference was not considered at the planning stage of a wind farm and it was during the later stages that the installation and commissioning was halted. This has resulted in huge losses to the owners of wind farm. Large wind turbines can rise nearly 200 meters above the ground, the tallest being Vestas V164 that stands 220 meters tall. Therefore, it has to be ensured that the turbines do not affect the flight path and are located well away from the line of approach. Another factor to consider is the site accessibility. A site has to be accessible not only for the turbine parts, but for the groundwork machinery that needs to install them, that is diggers and cranes, etc. This is a particularly big issue for larger wind turbines that can have blade sizes of more than 80 meters. Large components have to be transported on longer, heavier vehicles or LHVs. These special trailers have a huge turning radius. Thus, it's not just the presence of the roads leading to the site, but also the turning radius of the roads that can become a huge obstacle to the project. Similarly, areas that may have difficult terrain, that is rocky or mountainous tracks, can also add to the cost. 
Next up, we have the wind shadow. Ideally, the site around the wind turbine should be clear of any protruding features. If the wind turbines are installed close to a wooded land, then their performance can be severely hampered. The turbulence intensity of the wind increases after getting past the trees, which causes vibration problems as mentioned earlier. Offshore turbines benefit from winds with low turbulence intensity most of the times. Similarly, turbines should not be installed in the wind shadow of a hill, particularly if the hill covers the prevalent wind direction. Furthermore, provision should be made for one wind turbine not to be in the shadow of another wind turbine in the same farm in the direction of prevalent wind. Next up, we have geology, groundworks and excavation. Power lines from the turbines to the substation in the wind farm have to be laid down, usually underground. Furthermore, access roads and the foundation have to be laid on the site. There are also geological parameters such as soil softness and rock strength that can add to the cost of groundworks. In places where geological parameters are unfavorable, deeper foundations have to be dug, which adds to the cost. More concrete may be required, for example, on one side compared to another site. Another factor that is very important but often ignored is the historic or touristic interest for the planned site of the wind farm. Although local council may grant permission for building a wind farm for a site, but often it does not involve consent of the locals. This can cause problem further down the line. People are generally sensitive about the sites of historic interests, recreational spaces, or ones that are popular with tourists such as walking trail. A proposed site may be a fair distance away, but as long as the wind turbines are visible on the landscape or the seascape, people may file complaints against them. This can delay the project and at times even get it cancelled. In a famous case in Scotland, for example, the current US President Donald Trump objected to the wind farm that was offshore but was visible from his golf course. The last factor that we are going to discuss is the ecological interest. Bird strikes are an issue in the wind power industry. Often planning permission is not granted to very windy sites based on the fact that the proposed site lies in the path of migrating birds. The tip speed of the wind turbines are very high and can sever a bird in two. Again in Scotland for instance, the golden eagles are a protected species and therefore permissions for a wind farm are denied for sites that are close to their habitat. In many countries, avian data, that is the number of birds crossing a site every year, is also required for permission to be granted. This data can be obtained by installation of an avian radar. There may be other factors that hinder wind farm planning that are site or region specific. It is clear from the above mentioned factors that wind turbines cannot be just installed anywhere and most areas can be ruled out because of the unsuitability. If you learned from this video, then please do like it and subscribe to the channel for further informative videos. Thank you for your attention.